All right, so we're back here. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about sampling. So when we think about sampling, right, this is how we get people or units to study. People or units. So if someone was interested in trees um, to study. So with this, right, you know, so this could be any kind of one, right? So it could be, first we gotta figure out like who, who we wanna study, right? Some, some cases, right, this could be, um, as an example, this could be students at CSUSB, women who date inmates, Um, it could also be uh, people living in a neighborhood, whatever, right? You know, it really, there's a lot of different ways that you could figure this out. All depends on like what you're like most interested in studying and what you want to do, right? So from there, we usually want to get a sampling frame. And this is gonna be like a list of people to talk to. So the reason why we have this list and why sampling is a thing is that it is sometimes practical to talk to everyone. And it is also true that a sampling frame, so a list of people, a list is often incomplete. So the point being uh, with this, right, is that if we have all these different things, right, we need to draw a sample that can tell us something about the population. So if we draw this to the idea is that maybe a small number can give us insight to the population. So some of the, like probably the single best way to do this, right, is through a random sample, simple random sample. And so we just draw people randomly. And so every, anyone could get picked So anyone could get picked uh, from this, right? And um, so it's gonna be most representative of the population. It's also unbiased. So there's no reason why I picked someone. There's no like, no, like undercurrent behind it, right? Um, it's just like, I just drew people, they came in, they came not. Sometimes though, that may like not be like practical, right? You know, um, you know, sometimes we could do it uh, based off of uh, convenience. So this could be who is available. Now, based off of that, this is definitely subject to bias. Uh, because you're just using what is what is convenient, and what is convenient may not represent a population. So 
So it's kind of like not the best kind of thing to do, and it could lead to omitting certain uh, segments of the population. Which may not be good, right? Depending on what it is. It could be useful, could not be useful. Um, but it leads to, um, you know, it's just really like not good, right? So, um, a couple different ways to think about this is that when we think about sampling, there are a few things to keep in mind, right? One is that we want to limit something called sampling bias. When we think about sampling bias, right, you know, this means that we undercovered the population, so not enough people were selected. Um, there was a selection effect. Oops, put this away. In the process. And that's not really good either. And so that's not really good. The other part, and this comes up more with like uh, survey stuff, especially, is that when we think about different ways of selecting people, sometimes like we have bias related to non-response. So this could be related to um, people who don't do the survey, who don't do a survey, Or we can also have issues related to, um, or people who don't do a survey, or they don't answer a question, a survey question. Or, you know, some other factor like that, right? There are also issues related to response bias. Where people um, respond in a certain way. Um, because it's socially desirable. And so it seems like the right thing to say or do. So all those could like not be reasons why we have to be careful about our sample of where our data come from and why that could be important. So understand, like, it's kind of like, uh, you know, murky and kind of cloudy. Hopefully you've already read. Um, if you haven't read, you should always read first uh, before starting this kind of stuff. But uh, let's take an example and show, like, how this can, like, pop up and through, like, an example, right? So if you guys are ready, great. I knew I was, right? So let's look at an example 4.19 on page 171 in the fourth edition of this textbook, right? So it's talking about this political scientist looks at the effect of race of the interviewer. Um, and so basically there are these phone interviews, response asked whether they thought the interview was black or white, uh, even though all of them were actually black. And perceiving a white interviewer resulted in more conserved opinions. So it says, you know, if we look at this other information, 14, percent uh, um, or asked the question agreed that American society so America equals fair so it's fair to everyone when the interviewer was black so int equals black but this is in contrast to the same question right but 31% of people said America equals fair 
if they believed that the interviewer is white, right? So this question is asking us like, what kind of bias do we have? So what kind of bias do we have? All right, let's take the phone on this, right? And figure out what it is. So it gives us options that we can look at sampling bias, it could be non-response bias or response bias. So based off of this, we know something immediately, right? One, it's not a sampling bias, right? Because it doesn't tell us about any of the sampling method, it just says they call people. And so, yeah, they, we can assume that maybe they use a random digit dial, but that's not, that's not what it really is, right? Um, it's, is it non-response bias? No, because people answered. So the answer is going to be, the answer is response bias. And what we found here in this uh, kind of question, right, is, is that people may have shifted their answers due to the perception of race of the respondent of the, or excuse me, of the interviewer. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense is that the people have shifted their response because of what they, maybe what they thought the race of the telephone, telephone caller was, right? So there's like a double in people, in percentage of people who thought America was fair. And the only thing that was changed was like the person's perception of the race of the interviewer taker. So let's do a different one here. We'll do the next one. So 4.20. And this question is asking about Confederate flag symbol. So this question, you know, um, some Southern states have wrestled the issue of a state flag that is sensitive to African Americans and not divisive. Suppose the survey asks, do you oppose the present state flag that contains the Confederate symbol a symbol of past slavery in the South and a flag supported by extremist groups, right? So let's talk about what the first question is asking. So question A asks us, explain why this is an example of a leading question, right? So this is leading, we know that, but why? Because it's sort of charged with info saying the flag is wrong. And so this would constitute maybe a response bias because people are primed to think symbol is wrong. Right? So that's uh, kind of the first one, right? So what about question B? Question B asks us, um, explain why a better way to ask this question would be, do you favor or oppose the current state flag containing the Confederate symbol? So this is better because um, it states like the information, right? States info. But does not lead the uh, respondent to any outcome. It just says 
What do you think about this? Yes or no? It doesn't say this is the Confederate symbol is good or that it's bad. So those are two examples of response bias. So I'll leave you to do some other practice stuff in the module practice questions, as well as you can work on stuff here. And I'll see you guys next time.